You could be forgiven for thinking that a ring of plastic bottles around a telephone pole are no more than a quiet and forgettable oddity. But what would you say if you saw them every single day wherever you went? What if you'd seen hundreds of them? What if, when you walked home late at night, the glinting silhouettes of two-litre spectres leered at you from alleyways in forgotten nooks? It seems that the deeper I delve into this matter, the more mysteries I unearth. In tales of old, rings of mushrooms appeared to indicate the presence of supernatural phenomena. Well, swap the word supernatural with super doesn't make any sense, and you'll have a pretty good idea of where this video is going. I've heard theory after theory explaining the existence of these bottles. The most common theory is that the bottles ward off cats and dogs, which are viewed as a nuisance for various reasons. They scratch things, they piss and shit, and they're not welcome in everyone's front garden. Fine. But how is this the solution that's been arrived at? There's this nebulous claim that the animals don't like refractions of light in the water, and that drives them back. Or that they can't handle seeing their reflections in the water, which makes zero sense given I've never seen my face staring back at me in a water bottle. And in my neighbourhood I barely ever see cats around here to begin with. For every cat that I see walking around I must see about 50 of these bottles. Certainly not enough to justify the squadrons of crappy plastic eyesores loitering around my neighbourhood. It's not littering, but it might as well be. Because it looks horrible and achieves basically nothing. It's almost a kind of sanctioned littering. No, don't worry, that rubbish is supposed to be there. In fact, why are they so protective of their telephone poles in particular? Being protective of the plot where you tend your plants is one thing, but you have to wonder who's actually fighting this war on behalf of the civic infrastructure. And it doesn't actually solve the issue of animals needing to relieve themselves outdoors whatsoever. All it does is say, not here in this exact spot, and moving it elsewhere, even if it's two meters to the right. Because everyone's got to take a tinkle somewhere. I'm wondering just how bad the cat and dog piss situation was before the advent of the now ubiquitous bottle solution. And what about the other countries that don't use it? Have our towns and cities all succumbed to a stank that we can no longer even detect because we've been born and raised in it? I've heard it said that Westerners smell like milk to the Asians, but what if it was actually the odour of kitty cat's bladder beverage this whole time? Well, I compared the pet stats with the UK. In Japan there are 125 million people. They have 7.1 million dogs and 9 million cats. In the UK there are 67 million people and we have 13 million dogs and 12 million cats. Furthermore, Japan is 378,000 square kilometers to the UK's 244,000. So the UK has more cats and dogs spread across vastly less population in a smaller area. So if anything, it should be the UK desperately developing questionable new schemes to tackle problems of the effluent variety. The UK isn't exactly the Garden of Eden right now. In fact, the rivers of the nation are basically veins infested with poo at this point. So we've got 99 problems, but the quantity of animal urine in the streets ain't one. There's a sign in this bush that reads, Do not throw away your rubbish here. And yet, the very same caretaker has deployed countless huge water bottles throughout the plants and destroyed any pleasant appearance they might have had. Did they not stop to consider that the solution might be worse than the problem? Hideous plastic monoliths dispersed throughout every square foot of the flowerbed weren't enough by themselves, as they've also introduced these nasty machines that release a shrill, shrieking whine whenever it detects movement. There's also these large mounds of what looks like shit, presumably belonging to a larger, more intimidating animal. The hell kind of solution is this? It reminds me of that Breaking Bad episode where Malcolm's dad goes progressively more and more insane trying to deal with a single fly in his lab. Your flower bed's really not that impressive, pal. You're just being stubborn at this point. If you have to cover something in poo to protect it, maybe it's not worth your time. What about these ones? Guarding the outdoor washing machine, with a cone thrown in for good measure. Honestly, this one sad scene alone reveals more truth about Japan than every single episode of anime ever created. There's about 15 PhDs worth of cultural background to dissect here, and it's way beyond my pay grade. I'm just a man, admittedly a very cool and handsome man, trying to get by in this inscrutable society. I call these bottles net bearers, as they're standing by for when the rubbish is put out and has to be covered with a protective net. I respect them. It's reusing plastic bottles for a practical and demonstrably useful purpose that serves the neighbourhood. 
The Crow War has been getting uglier since my first rant on this channel, and these boys are on the front lines. A similar species are these basketball hoop weights. Nothing elegant about it, but I can at least comprehend what I'm seeing. Cool, look at the size of these chucks. What are they warding off with these? Tigers? It was only in the course of making this video that I began to realise a sense of deja vu, because it's simply the traffic cone situation all over again. Once you notice them, it's impossible to stop seeing them everywhere, and you can never again return to the naive, sweet child you were when you began this journey. So this time I resolved to do something different, and contact Japanese people directly. But the first time I asked a Japanese person in real life, the response was simply, I don't know. So, on a language learning app, I consulted a number of Japanese pen pals, who I've done language exchange with in the past. The next person I asked confirmed the cat theory. And the next. And the next. But we've already established that that's the tip of a plastic iceberg that is sinking the ship of my sanity. Some comments online suggest it's actually a method of repelling flies, as the sunlight reflects off the water and disturbs their eyes. And someone else even claimed that it was for travelling people to drink so you won't be bothered with strangers knocking on your door. Somehow I don't think I would tuck into the telephone pole water, even if I was quite desperate. You know what this says? No parking. No parking and stop littering cigarettes here. Surely this is therefore the one scenario where a traffic cone would make perfect sense, and yet they've gone instead for two bottles of water and the duct tape. You can't tell me there's not something weird going on here. Some force of evil is stirring and making apparently normal people do this. Or look at this. Every time they want to open or close the gate, they've got to remove and then redeploy this janky defense system. What I don't get is why the usage of the bottles varies so greatly by people even living on the same street. Some people put one or two down, and that's apparently enough, whereas others need a whole battalion. The inconsistency is baffling. And what about overcast days when it's all cloud and there's no sunshine to refract through the bottles? What about snowy days? What if the bottles are green and cloudy? What if the bottle's empty and hanging from a fence? What then, O ye who worship plastic? A war is being fought in this very city, and I can't understand what it's for. Some have claimed that the water is left out in case of emergency, where a supply of water is needed. But there's really not very much of it to use, either for drinking or for flushing your toilet. And even then, why would you keep it outside? Okay, well maybe they're outdoors in case there's a fire, and some good Samaritan is supposed to dash over and start pouring two-litre bottles onto the nearby inferno the hell is this supposed to achieve? In the process of making this video, I've since seen online testimonies that this has also been done in Scotland and Australia too. I've also seen claims that the bottles only work at night due to the way the cat's eyes work. It's bizarre, the sheer amount of hearsay surrounding this matter is comparable to the beliefs of a medieval peasant. Well, guess what? I found a blog from 11 years ago that mentions this very topic, and they pointed out a Japanese TV show where they put this very theory to the test with five different cats. They put cat food in a dish surrounded by various arrangements of bottles and other shiny objects, and not a single cat was repelled. The most extreme reaction was mild curiosity towards the bottles, and that's all. So the myth is long since busted, but, and this will really surprise you, some people in Japan can't seem to adapt. <laughs> but wait, there's another theory. Supposedly cats are using posts and such to scratch on, causing a headache for the homeowners worried about property damage. Blocking things off with water bottles solve this issue, and if they scratch the water bottles, they'll pierce the plastic and get sprayed with water. I feel like waterboarding would be the more viable option here. And why would the cat scratch against the very thing supposedly repelling them in the first place? It kind of reminds me of businesses implementing plastic barriers these last few years. It's clear to anyone that this is ineffective, yet they remain. As for some people out there, the act of looking like you're doing something to solve a problem is more important than whether or not you actually solve it. It's honestly tempting to sneak out one night and piss all over these bottles myself, just to imagine the expressions of confusion on the faces of the believers. But perhaps even that sticky, unpleasant evidence wouldn't stop them. In fact, on many occasions, my own family cat, Princess Leia, don't ask, would sneak over to my unattended glass of water and attempt to drink from it, despite the fact that it was a shimmering glass tube of refracted light. Animals need to drink, surely, so it doesn't make sense for them to fear shiny, clean water. I then found out that Snopes has weighed in on this matter, only to sit on the fence and shrug their shoulders. They don't know. How can that be the answer? And they've outlined even more potential theories as to what's going on here. It's funny, I thought this was just another strange quirk in the neighbourhoods of Japan, but I seem to have fallen into some great international conspiracy 
that's left the fact checkers scratching their heads. What's exhausting is that even if all of these separate theories are true, it doesn't actually resolve the weirdness of the situation. Because surely it's not normal behaviour to display a row of water bottles in front of your house because of dogs or cats or flies. Isn't it more of a nuisance being permanently surrounded by these ugly bottles than any small pool of cat piss that'll be washed away with the rain? But cat piss kills flower beds. Okay, yes, fine, that's true. But surely that can be sorted out by any number of other solutions that, you know, actually work. By now, I know better than to expect the situation to change. So I will maintain my interest in observations from a distance, as an enthusiastic yet puzzled naturalist. Who knows, maybe one day my records will be exhibited in the halls of the British Museum. Anyway, thanks for watching. This is probably one of my more punishing videos to watch, but something had to be said. Your reward for making it to the end of the video is the mighty Tower of the Sun in Osaka. You can go inside and it's got a kind of Willy Wonka vibe. Thank you, good night.